What was the fastest way you've seen someone ruin their life? Couple of guys in my hometown were looking for something to steal so they could sell it to buy drugs. They come to a house where no one was supposed to be home and one guy gets out of the car and goes to the house to steal a grill. A friend of the home Miyawana happened to be there and came out when he stepped onto the porch. He tells a friend that he is looking for his dog so the guy walks out into the yard to help look for it. The would-be robber panics and pulls out a gun and shoots the man in the back of the head. At 21 he started a life sentence for a really stupid murder. Huffing paint. My college buddy was an affable stoner type who liked psychedelics, weed, and drinking. He was broke, so he got into huffing paint over the summer. He passed out with a plastic bag full of spray paint over his face and ended up depriving his brain of oxygen and is now mentally disabled due to brain damage. Like drooling slurring can't tie his own shoes or perform basic life tasks level disabled a group of boys at my high school did that after school they huffed got in a truck and left school the driver passed out at the red light at the closest intersection went through the red light and hit another car the driver died another passenger in his truck was killed and the driver of the other car he hit was killed the three other passengers in the driver's truck also had serious injuries the other driver was a young mother and the aunt slash guardian of another student who had lost his parents earlier in life. It was so tragically stupid. Saw a guy slide down a stair rail and fall backwards 12 feet onto a concrete floor. Died at the hospital less than 24 hours later. From college student to dust in less than a day. Pretty quick. Guy from my school went to rob a corner shop at knife point. He pulled up with his push bike went into the store and threatened the shopkeeper with a knife to give him all the money in the register. The shopkeeper refused and the robber was too posse to do anything, so he grabbed a pack of gum and ran out. 20 minutes later the robber realized he left his bike behind in his panic, so he went back to get it. This was at the same time B police were questioning the shopkeeper on the incident. They swiftly arrested him there and think he got two years for stealing gum at knife point. My half brother decided it was a good idea to try and rob the restaurant he worked at. Didn't wear a mask or try to hide his voice in any way. At the time, he was hopelessly addicted to crack, so he obviously wasn't thinking straight when he convinced his dealer's GF to help him out. She secured a gun for him and he was dumb enough or desperate enough not to check it and didn't realize it was a BB gun. They did manage to get out of the restaurant with $7,000, but the dealer and his very large friends were waiting for them. When they came out, they beat the crap out of him, took the money, and left him unconscious for the police. He got 7 years in prison for armed robbery and grand larceny. He did manage to kick his drug habit in prison though. In less than 5 years, one of my cousins was married twice, to two equally horrible people, and blew through two inheritances. He and his first wife trashed a house my grandmother let them live in for free and got mad when she asked him to pay for repairs. He is now completely alienated from family, including his parents, and disowned. This happened to my brother. He's walking home and his buddy pulls up in a new car and asks if he wants to go for a ride. He gets in and they pull into the gas station and the guy said he had to go in and pay. My brother is sitting there when multiple police cars pull in and surround the car, guns drawn. The friend had stolen the car and robbed the gas station and went out the back. Took 15 minutes. Took months to convince the police he was innocent. Kid I went to high school with used to break into homes in his neighborhood to steal phones with his younger brother. They always did seem to have a couple of screws loose, but never thought they were capable of hurting anyone. Then one night they robbed the wrong house. As they were sneaking into the kitchen, the owner of the house came in for a late night glass of water and caught them in the act. Unlucky for them, he also was a former marine. They got into it, but one of the kids had a knife and started repeatedly stabbing the dude in the head. They ran off after that, but the next day they were arrested. One is still in juvie 5 years later, the other was sentenced to 30 years in state prison. Edit, owner of the house is apparently still alive, but suffers from a lot of mental issues now. I saw a guy in the highway blow past me in a lifted truck doing about 120 to 130 miles per hour hit a concrete divider. 
he was being chased by a state trooper I say, that was the fastest way I've seen someone ruin their life. Woo. I heard a lady in and south hit a motorcycle waiting in the left turn lane. Heard the crunch, and then saw the scene across a large intersection. She was texting of course, and didn't even see him or slow down. He looked like a pile of rags about 30 feet from his bike, and she hit him so hard, that his helmet came off. I don't know how he turned out, but vehicular homicide seemed a likely outcome for her. My sister and her husband started doing crack. Both lost their job. They lost their house. Moved across the country with their kids who hated them for their big frick ups. Sister decides to get sober, after getting a DUI. Husband kicks her out for it. She moves back with nothing but the clothes on her back and gets sober. Kids move out to be with her a year later. She gets her life in order, and is now in the process of buying a house. Husband works now, just to support a drug and alcohol habit, while living in his mom's house. So even though she ruined her life pretty bad for a while she managed to get her shoot back together. My dad's co-worker's brother was playing with a gun that he thought was empty. He pointed it at his friend's head and pulled the trigger which killed him instantly. It wasn't empty and he got about 10 years. Which is why you don't keep your finger on the trigger, never point it at something you don't intend to destroy. Magazine out and make sure you see with your eyes that the chamber is clear. Every single time you pick up a firearm. One of my friends ordered crack from the dark web. Where in from it's not something anybody ever really does. It's unheard of really. Anyway. Fast forward 6 months and has the most vile person you could ever meet. He dragged another friend down with him. He went from an engineer to stealing and backstabbing in about a month. Heartbreaking. Dots to crack. A few years back, one of the students attending the university I work at got caught trying to sneak a shootload of drugs into a local nightclub. The first we found out about it was when some police officers turned up with a warrant to go through his room and I was the lucky person chosen to go let them in. So I opened the door and oh dear lord there's drugs everywhere. If you've ever seen one of those old to me pick and mix shops with all the sweets in big glass jars, imagine that but with pills and wraps of powder instead. Everything else was all super neat and tidy, and it was one of the cleanest student rooms I'd ever been in. Just that every flat surface had a container full of drugs or some other sort of paraphernalia on it. This student was in his fourth year of master's degree, and due to finish in three months, he ended up being charged with possession with intent to supply, and since a lot of the stuff he had in there was class A, is now going to be in prison for a decade or two. He was also expelled of course, and will still be on the hook for pounds 60k of student debt afterwards. Drunk driving. Guy crashed his car, ran from the scene, was tracked down, resisted arrest, assaulted a cop, blew way over, and in 2 hours went from kid to convict. N. A guy I know decided one day he was going to rob someone. Now this guy has never owned a gun or anything, and never really was into robbing people. He just sold weed. So he decides to get a gun, and go rob someone. He didn't test the waters, nothing. Just jumped right in. A few hours later he's arrested, and his bail is set at $70,000. He's awaiting trial currently, but his ass isn't getting out. Charges are, robbery first degree, possession of stolen property under $1,000, possession of illegal firearm, possession of marijuana with intent to sell way to go dude, you fricked up bad. Didn't even last a day on the run. Born again Christian teen met a druggie who got her into drugs, wound up pregnant, decided to get married as it was the right thing. Neither of them could hold down a job, and they had 6 more kids. Decided to find God again, and move around doing ministry work, while homeschooling their kids. Edit, the finding God was not a saving grace for them. It was the only way they could come up, to care for their family. They are still doing drugs. Crystal meth over 2. 5 months. My long ago neighbor had an Audi, crotch rocket, beautiful, classy home furnishings and a great job, only to end up with a folding chair and nothing else. Very sad to watch. He was a nice enough guy before the fall. I once knew someone who swapped university courses midway through, so that he could become a teacher in a subject he was more passionate about. We were pleased for him, he was really excited, and it all got off to a great start. 
He eventually completed his degree, and qualified as a teacher in that subject. However, he is no longer a teacher. Why is that? Well, turns out he had sex with two underage students and verbally harassed them afterwards. There was a failed third attempt. He then fled to Italy for some reason he has no connection there a to escape justice, eventually turned himself in, and was arrested when he arrived back in the UK. Just shy of 3 years in prison, although he was paroled at around the halfway mark. 10 years on the UK sex offender register with a supplementary sexual harm prevention order SHPO which controls his interaction with young people. Banned from teaching for life. Apparently that wasn't all. I heard other gossip about his behavior in the classroom, which was deeply troubling, but not criminal, so nothing was done. I have no idea what he does now. People have seen him, spoken to him, but he doesn't speak of what happened. No idea what he was thinking, or what he initially set out to achieve. Did he go into teaching, so that he could do these things? Or did his mind somehow warp a bit later on? This kid at my school university just recently stole a pickup truck attached to a hot dog stand where everyone goes to for drunk food. Oh, yeah he was drunk. He blew a 18 and when asked, while he did it, he said because him a dumbass. That hedge fund manager a few months back that lost all of his clients money hundreds of millions within a matter of days I think. Chief of anesthesia, 30 year marriage, kid, dealer Ian in the driveway. Secret bank account, hookers, meth, more hookers, bank account found, divorce, more hookers, teeth knocked out in strip club fight, felony meth conviction, lost job, lost license, lost their hookers, now parks cars at the airport. Honestly, meth. Have an aunt who went from being a full time correctional officer and mom, to having both of her kids taken away and now being a resident in the prison she worked at because of meth. An Indian guy I worked with at a tech company was there late one night. He asked the Latin a cleaning lady that was there for the night cleaning if she'd like to go to a hotel with him and then whipped his deck out directly under cameras in the upstairs area of the office. She called the police and he was shipped back to India losing his six figure a year job. Former high school teacher. He was a retired English teacher, former coach, former senior class advisor confident for students at risk. Wife was also a teacher and both their kids went to our school and graduated. Turns out he was being investigated for child pronoun I think possession and distribution, not sure about solicitation. He was in school talking to my freshman class in his wife's room about preparing for the future properly the last day of classes. Two weeks later, we read on the news and papers that state police sheriffs and city police raided his house and he killed himself in the woods out behind his house he had laptops full of videos and pictures it shook our town to say the least luckily the wife was retiring at the end of the year anyway so she didn't have to live with the shame at the school i felt so bad for her though she and the kids were investigated and knew nothing about it people hide their demons well i guess a friend of mine was 3 years from retirement at age 53 and decided to throw it away. He used to take the winter off and spend it with his family. He used to do hard drugs and he decided to start shooting meth winter before last. He taught his 18 year old son how to do drugs and run around with one he didn't return to work and lied to his wife about them not being able to take him back at work. He texted me in the middle of the night that he would have hung himself by the time I woke up. He sent the same message to his brother who called the police to do a welfare check, and they found meth. He is losing his beautiful house, and is going to be living out of a camp trailer for now. He had everything going so well and now he has to start over. Cheated on his wife, and got caught exchanging nude photos with fans, some of whom were underage, then blocked said wife on Twitter, before announcing his divorce there. High school football player has full ride offers from multiple schools including OU, OSU, UT, and Alabama. Second to the last game of the regular season he gets into an argument with the strength coach over the radio station playing in the weight room, and ends up hitting the coach with his helmet. Expelled from school, and had all of his offers rescinded. James Charles tweeted and deleted something flippant I'm severely paraphrasing, and now his whole kingdom is coming down in less than 3 days. 
sweetest, kindest 32 year old woman I've ever met Hoss in the top 5 list of fun people in my 62 year life, got messed up with Tramadol, dozed off while driving, hit and seriously injured another driver, and let her lesbian lover, that she broke off her engagement to back into her life. Nothing but drama, and then lover dumped her by marrying somebody else. She had some pre-existing issues, but could stand some personal decision making skills. Kid from my old school robbed a betting shop with a machete for a measly 200 pounds. His face got caught on CCTV, and he was caught by feds later, that day hiding in his own garden shed with the money, and went straight to jail lol what a freaking weapon. Worked at a casino in my hometown in high school. Saw a guy in there fairly regularly playing slots, and he was super nice all the time. However, I came to find out that he had a great job, two kids and a wife, but he lost it all because of his gambling addiction. He had nothing left after his wife left him, and he spent the little he did have on slots. Really sad. Don't gamble folks. I've seen several things on social media where someone ranted very rudely about people, or gave much less than respectful response to people on social media, and then got fired as a result. That, in turn, gives you a reputation that other employers tend to find, and, consequently, make sure you don't get hired at their businesses either. Basically, don't be an asshole, or at least don't be one online. I know a few people that have dropped out of school at ridiculously young ages, some never even went to high school, all of them have shoot jobs, and are just generally miserable. As much of a meme as it is, stay in school, you don't have to do anything extraordinary, just graduate with the bare minimum. It's so worth it in the long run. Yeah, at the very least finish high school. It's not like a ton of places are going to hire a 14 year old so, unless you literally have no other options left to survive, stay in school. Higher education, it depends. I personally wish I had never tried and wasted all those years and instead went into the job market immediately after high school. Co-worker of mine started doing crystal meth. Went from a very promising career, to rock bottom in 17 days. Lost his wife, kid, and job. Now he's homeless, and stealing anything and everything. Now obviously this wasn't overnight but eventually his habit tore him to pieces. Our best guess was he started using at least 4 months prior to getting fired. This is a long and complicated story, but here's a short summary. This all happened in the span of about 6 months. A friend of a friend started dating a new lady immediately after his divorce. She was clearly more interested in his money than anything else, and was generally mean and an instigator of problems. But he didn't see that, regardless of how many times people warned him. Phoebe been dating for a bit, and because she had young children, they were older her late 30s, in late 50s, and his lease was up soon. She convinced him that they needed to buy a house together. She got him to give her his portion of the down payment on the house in cash. He handed over 80k, which was actually most of the total cost. Then she didn't put his name on anything, because his credit wasn't as good as hers. She convinced him to buy all of the furniture, painting, flooring, and other stuff. Her excuse for that was claiming that she was going to pay for some remodeling and a new roof, which the house didn't need, but she lied about. She also convinced him to give her the money for all of those things in cash. When the house was nice and ready, he lived there for about 2 days, before she dumped him. She said all this face to face. There's nothing in writing between them. There's no paper trail. There's no text messages. There's no witnesses. It just looks like she paid for the house which is in her name. And that's the end of it. He has no recourse. Lost all of his savings. Depression. A suicide attempt, which led to a lost job. Had to move back in with his ex-wife. Working on Manasab in Gijistan, a contractor showed up to the network shop, and on his first day got fired. He showed up, and asked where the snack room was. Got very upset, when he was told there isn't a snack room. Well, Google has a snack room. Dude, you're on a military base in the middle of nowhere. Walk literally next door to the chow hall and grab a candy bar, if you need one. About an hour later he asked where the nap room was. Again. Got very upset, when he was told there isn't a nap room. 
so upset that he started throwing shit around and we had to call security forces. He was forcibly removed from the base and banned by the commander his first day. I can't even imagine how hard that destroyed his it career since the company had to fly him home the day after they flew him in. No one was gonna hire that guy after that. This dude got hired to work with us. He had all sorts of scabs and just had that luck to him. Everyone knew he had a problem with meth. His excuse was he was a prospector and has scabs all the frick over himself from rocks hitting him. Anyways, he opened up to me one day at lunch about how he's trying to get everything back on track. His wife is hooked on Arxy. Most of his money went toward that cause she was hopelessly hooked. For about 4 months he was doing great. His skin cleared up. He got some color on his face. He was sort of a different person. One day we go to lunch at Waffle House, and while we're eating, this thuggish looking dude approaches us and offers us some meth sorry for having to drop the classiest sentence of all time on you like that. Him like hell no, but my co-worker is like. Let me get your number. Next day, no call no show. Never heard from him again. A month or so later, a co-worker comes in. He saw the dude begging on a street corner and took a pic. Watched someone join the military, and within a year, got married to his GF of 4 months, then within 2 years had a daughter and twin sons, he hates his wife, but they have kids together, has home now, but he is miserable, and she is miserable and the babies are happy, but only because the daughter is 2 and the twins are 1, give it a few years and I'm sure the kids will be miserable too. The worst part is, that his parents were together for far too long, and he knows the toll it can have on the kids, but he wants to be just like his dad, even though the dad says his biggest mistake was waiting so long to divorce the mother. An acquaintance realized some strange things were going on with her finances. Found out her husband discovered gambling, and got hardcore addicted very quickly. Maximum doubt all their loans and credit cards, reopened and maximum doubt a dormant joint business account from a decade earlier. Hubby even stole their son's summer job money. Everything she owned was gone. A recovering heroin addict I knew, had been clean for 8 months. She relapsed and lost her relationship, the place she was staying would have been permanent if she stayed clean, and her kids all in one day. A friend in high school was popular, good looking dude could have been a model really really smart. Got accepted to an ivy league school and all he had to do was make sure he passed all his classes and he was in. Well, the last week of senior year he had a math exam and all he had to do was just show up and write his name on the exam. The teacher had it set up where you get at least a 40% just by writing your name. He just couldn't get a 0% or else he wouldn't pass. The dipshoot decided to skip his exam and go get high instead. Failed the exam in the class, and couldn't attend the Ivy League school. He eventually spiraled over the years into drugs and dead end jobs. It's been 15 years, since high school and last I heard he's still living at home. He could have went places in life, but decided to get stoned instead. There were a couple of people who my sister went to school with that tried to do drugs. Either they were doing it at school, or on school property, because they were expelled. This won't be very bad, but it happened about 3 weeks before they were going to graduate. Apparently it was bad enough that they were not allowed into any schools in the state, I believe. 